we're standing uh, just right below the summit of Collier Cone um, to the east here, and what we're looking at is the first real good picture of the Collier Glacier. This is kind of the famous picture spots that uh, was taken throughout the 20th century. Um, so uh, people from the Mazamas would come up here and then take pictures and document the glacier's retreat uh, since the turn of the 20th century. And so this has provided us with a crucial and critical record of the glacier as it re has retreated up to its present day location. As you can also see the very large lateral moraines that were created during the Little Ice Age, um, probably some 100 to 120 meters in height. Uh, at the turn of the century, around 1900, the glacier was completely filled in at that time. And what we have to do is now, uh, we have to walk down this kind of gravelly, loose rock and uh, negotiate our way down and not crack our skulls open. And then we'll walk around the western portion of the lake and then from there on it's just uh, hiking until our lungs explode up to our base camp at about 2295 meters. Um, what we got here, as far as these moraines, uh, these were created as the glacier uh, advanced and pushed all this debris off to the side. And then at it, 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 the Little Ice Age maximum, the glacier's terminus was actually right against this ridge right over here and actually split and forked. One section of the glacier went west down this direction and the other went uphill over here east. And, um, Eventually, as the glacier retreated, these moraines created a dam, and then sometime early in the 20th century, that moraine dam broke, releasing all this water down this creek right here. doing here is we're uh, using this is called a Kovacs drill to uh, drill in a hole so we can plant these stakes. We're going to reset them because uh, the next time I'll be up here uh, we don't want to lose any data so we want to reset them and make note of uh, um, the heights and uh, drill away. Digging the snow to try to locate our Automatic weather station that was buried last last fall. So this is the developing ice fall on the Collier Glacier. One of the features that makes it rather interesting. Uh, as the ELA climbs, it is proposed that if the equilibrium line, the area between the accumulation area and the ablation area climbs to above this ice fall, you will expose an extreme amount of mass or ice mass to the ablation area, thus accelerating the ablation of the glacier. As you can see, over the years, this ice fall has been steepening and what we consider developing. So it's steepening and more ice is crumbling off of it. Looking down in the crevasse here, this is a very, very large basalt, the basaltic andesite cliff that goes down beyond what I can see. And this is what's helping create this topographic feature that's causing this ice fall. The snow is so dense up here, being that it's the end of August, and it's, it's so dense I couldn't get the pro my solid aluminum probes through. Uh, so we're, have, we're having to find crevasses of equal elevation as my previous probe soundings to, to use them as a, uh, um, a proxy for snow depth for this summer. weather station down on the moraine at about 2295 meters and it stands about two meters off the moraine here. And this is the main weather station that derives the energy balance model that I'll use to calibrate in my thesis. And so the instruments that we're recording here is from left to our right to left here is we have 
This is an Epley infrared, infrared radiometer. This will measure uh, net infrared radiation, emitted radiation. This white sensor in the center here, if it has gills on it, that's our temperature relative humidity sensor. The sensor over to the left here is the Epley shortwave radiometer, and this is measuring net downward solar radiation. And then up here, the spinning thing right there, that's our anemometer. All these data get collected every five minutes. It gets dumped into the CR10 XPB Campbell Scientific Data Logger. And from there, I can connect to the Campbell Scientific Data Logger with this cord here, and I can monitor and look at the data and download the data onto this computer so I can bring it back to the lab or back to my office and uh, compute it into the energy balance model. So what we're doing right now is we're just dumping the data from the data logger, checking it out and making sure the weather station's operating perfectly, which it has been.